الحديث العاشر the tenth حديث عن نعيم المجمر عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن أمتي يدعون يوم القيامة غرا محجلين من آثار الوضوء فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل غرته فليفعل وفي لفظ آخر رأيت أبا هريرة يتوضأ فغسل وجهه ويديه حتى كاد يبلغ المنكبين ثم غسل رجليه حتى رفع إلى الساقين ثم قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أمتي يدعون يوم القيامة غرا محجلين من آثار الوضوء فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل غرته وتحجيله فليفعل وفي لفظ لمسلم سمعت خليلي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول تبلغ الحلية من المؤمن حيث يبلغ الوضوء The messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Abu Huraira narrated the, the person that narrated from Abu Huraira His name is Nuaym Al-Mujmir Nuaym Al-Mujmir Ibn Abdillahi Abu Abdillahi Al-Madani Al-Qurashi He was a Mawla for Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه Slave boy for Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه He is a Tabi'i Thiqa, reliable He and his father were both known as Al-Mujmir They were both known as Al-Mujmir um, This hadith, the first narration Is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim Bukhari narrated in Kitab Al-Wudu Muslim narrated in Kitab Al-Tahara The second narration is narrated by Muslim only Muslim only As the author said وفي لفظ Muslim Muslim narrated it in Kitab Al-Tahara The second narration is also by sorry, The third narration is also by Al-Imam Muslim It's also by Imam Muslim Kitab Al-Tahara So it's the only first one where Bukhari and Muslim both narrate The other two as the author mentioned, Abdul Ghani, Abdul Wahid al Maqdisi, they are the wording of Imam Muslim. Muslim is the only one who narrated this wording. Um, the first thing before we explain the hadith, the last part of the hadith where it says, Does everyone see that? Put that in brackets. And is that uh, and is that in the same brackets as the Prophet Asim speech? Is it by itself separate after the brackets is concluded? Show me. Show me. It's all the all red together. It's all right, red, yeah? It should have been. That part is not the Prophet's speech. So you need to put that in brackets by itself. Do that in the first narration. And do it in the second narration as well. It's also in the second part. فَمَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يُطِيلَ غُرَّتَهُ وَتَحْجِيلَهُ فَلْيَفْعَلُ Pay attention. Just put that in brackets first. That part of the hadith is not the Prophet's speech. That is the speech of Abu Hurairah. Hey, who remembers what this would be in hadith? What would the hadith call, be called when the Prophet says something if another person's speech enters the Prophet's they mix up and they become one. And it's only the Prophet's speech. Uh, sorry, it's not only the Prophet's speech. Sorry, it's not only the Prophet's speech. It is actually another person's speech which is mixed with the Prophet's speech. What did we say this was called? It's called Mudraj. It's called Mudraj. Now, I'm going to quickly go over something with you guys. When we look at hadith, in terms of its acceptance and rejection, I'm talking about. Looking at the hadith of the angle of acceptance and rejection. Pay attention. A hadith is either rejected because the narrator is criticized. The narrator is criticized. Okay? Pay attention. The narrator 
is criticized. Are you all with me? There is something regarding the narrator. Okay? The second one is called al uh, fi sanad The chain of narration is disconnected. Any hadith which you ever find that the scholars have rejected and said, we don't accept this hadith which is mardud, it is not accepted as one of those two reasons. It's either something to do with the narrator, the hadith. Are you all with me? Or it's what? Or it's disconnected. Or it's just disconnected. That somebody's missing from the chain. And in terms of its disconnection of the chain, it's eight types. If a hadith is disconnected, it's eight types of disconnection that we find. It's mu'allaq, uh, which is the first type, mu'allaq, and then mursal, and then mu'dal, and munqata, and then mudallas, and then mursal khafi, and the seventh one, which is mu'an'an, and the eighth, which is mu'annan, mu'annan. All of these are the eight types which a hadith is rejected because of the chain of narration is disconnected. So the first type, as I said, is how the first was mu'allaq. The second one is mursal. Mursal. The third one, which is mu'dal. Mu'dal. The fourth one is munqata. Uh, the fifth one is mudallas. So if you go back to mu'allaq, so what's the definition of mu'allaq? Mu'allaq is when the shaykh can, like he doesn't mention his shaykh. Like Bukhari doesn't mention his own teacher. This is called mu'allaq. Is Bukhari not mention his own teacher? This is called mu'allaq. The second one is uh, mursal. We took it in Bayquni, right? Wa mursalun min sahabiyun sakat. Wa qul gharibu ma rawa rawin fakat. Wa mursal means what? Yeah, when a tabi'i says qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A tabi'i. Who, who, did he has, who has he dropped out? No, if he has dropped a sahabi, then we would have taken his narration. There's no problem. But the worry is that he may have narrated from another tabi'i, which we don't know whether his reliability we can take. Does that make sense? As I said, the only person who's mursal is, is, is really discussed and it's really like given a lot of respect is the mursal of Sa'id Sa Sa ibn al-Musayyib. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, he's mursal. If Sa'id al-Musayyib, even though he didn't see the Prophet, if he says that the Prophet said, the scholars tend to have a soft spot for him, because of the fact that the majority of the people he did narrate from was who? A companion. So we don't really need to know who the companion is. Because wherever you go with a companion, huh, they are udul, they're reliable. Does that make sense? Um, the other one which is mu'dal. And mu'dal we mentioned, wa mu'dalu saqeetu min huthnani. Mu'dal means what? When two people who are together, hey, pay attention, pay attention, don't get it wrong here. Mu'dal doesn't mean if there's one person at the front of the chain of narration and another person at the beginning of the chain of narration. So at the end and at the front. That's not called Mu'dal. Mu'dal has to mean two people are next, Mutawaliyan. They're next to each other. And two, the first two people are next to each other. They're both missing. Two people together are both missing. And they are after each other. This is called Mu'dal. This hadith is rejected. because it's The fourth which is called Muqata. Muqata is simple. It's just any type of disconnection. All of the mentioned ones us one way or another they are munqata. Munqata it just means disconnection regardless of how it happens. It's a disconnection. So a mu'allaq is a disconnection. Isn't it not? It is a mursal is a disconnection. Mu'dal is a disconnection. Five is what? Mudallas. So what is it? Wa mu'dal usaqitu minu tunani wa ma'ata mudallas and no'ani isqatu li shaykhi wa an yaqula an man fawqahu bi an wa an wa thani la yusqituhu la kin yasif aw safahu bi ma bihi la yan'arif. So it's mudallas. Mudallis is a person who tries to uh, sort out the chain of narration. There's ways he does it. First one is what? He drops his teacher or somebody he's hiding. So when he does drop the person, he uses a an or an an instead. Just, just to make... والثاني لا يسقطه. The second one, he doesn't throw the person out. But what does he do? والثاني لا يسقطه لكن يصف أوصافه بما به لا يعرف. He will give the sheikh a description he's not known for. He's got another name, but he'll give him a description that he's not known for. Are you all with me? He gives him a kunya that no one knows his kunya for, or he gives him a nickname that no one knows this nickname, so the people don't know him. He's trying to beautify the chain of narration. 
Okay. Number six is called Mursal al Khafi. Mursal al Khafi is very, is very, very delicate and it's called, it's, it's from the Ilal, which is the deepest rooted type of Ilal. And it's different from the normal Mursal. It's di different from the normal Mursal, but we'll take that inshallah when we go to Nukhbat al Fikr, inshallah ta'ala. The seventh one, which is Mu'an An, which is when the hadith is used, An Ana is the, is the usage of the word An, and An. And an, the user of it. And number seven is the usage of the word an. Number eight is the usage of the word an. So a person uses the word an. Those types are all forms of what? Disconnection of hadith. Are you all with me? The disconnection of hadith. They are all rejected. The second type of rejection of hadith comes because of the there's a narrator or an individual who's narrating the hadith. Something or someone has said something about him, or he's that narrator has actually opposed other people, or etc. So the second type is a ta'lu fi rawi, am a sababu fi rawi, a reasoning behind the narrator, and that is basically six types. That is basically six types. The first one is maudu, fabricated. Maudu means when a person ascribes to the Prophet ﷺ that which he did not say, and it's one of the worstest form of lie. And a hadith which is fabricated, it cannot be helped or supported. It cannot be helped or supported in any form or way or shape. It's finished. You see? The second one is matruk. The second one is what? A matruk. Uh, a matruk is a hadith which is a left. And the reason why it's left is because the narrator is suspected to have lied. So it's a bit less than mawdu. Mawdu is actually he, he lied. He know, he's known to lie. But the matruk is mutahamun bil kadib. He's suspected to be a liar or a t one to lie. You see? Number three is uh, munkar. 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 Munkar is when a person. Munkar. Is. Um, when a person who is not reliable huh, or who is not strong in hadith he's not strong sorry he's not strong and he opposes he has remember we said when a reliable per, reliable and a strong person oppose another strong person it's called what? Shad but when a person who is weak opposes a person who is strong huh, this is called munkar so it's the type, the opposition here is coming from a person who is not in any way or form or shape. He cannot be challenged towards the person he is opposing. Does that make sense? Yes. And the opposite to ma'ruf, the munkar is ma'ruf. Ma'ruf is the opposite. Okay. Number four is mu'allal. Mu'allal is a defect. Mu'allal is a, it's a defect. Mu'allal is a defect. defect. Number five, which is the one we want to come to, which is the whole intent of this point, which is the fifth one. This is called Mukhalafat al thiqat It's the opposition of reliable individuals. Are you all with me? And that is five types. The first one is mudraj. The first one is what? It's mudraj. So the first one is mudraj. And that's where we want to stop, inshallah, here now. We're going to take mudraj. Mudraj happens in two ways. It happens in what? Two ways. The first way that the mudraj happens is in the chain of narration. Or the mudraj can actually occur in what? In the metan of the hadith, the text of the hadith. So it can happen in the chain of narration. And it can also happen in the... In the matter of the hadith. But the reasoning of the mudraj is a opposition. A person opposes other narrations in this issue. There's an opposition that a person opposes. Now, we're not going to take the chain of narration. Ibn, Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, in his Nukhbat al-Fikr, he brings four types of mudraj in the chain. I'm not going to mention that. We're going to go to it when we study Nukhbat al-Fikr. Are you with me? We're now going to take the only, we're going to take the type which is the mudraj in the matter, which now occurred in this hadith which is that somebody is going to add something to a hadith. 
and there are reasons why scholars have mentioned reasons why it happened and to be to be clear with you all and to show you how this science has been served al imam al khatib al baghdadi authored a book authored a book just on mudraj only a nice big book uh, on mudraj he authored he called it al faslu lil wasli he called it al faslu lil wasli al mudraj al faslu lil wasli al mudraj so he called it al faslu lil mus lil fasli al mudraj fin naqli fin naqli so he called it al waslu al faslu sorry lil wasli um fi al mudraj al sorry al waslu fi al fas al faslu lil wasli al mudraj fi al naql which basically means he talks about a hadith which are mudraj he deals with a hadith which are mudraj so we said that the first one, the first, the two types. The first type is chain of narration, and we also metan the text. What has happened to us in this hadith is فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل غرته فليفعل is مدرج في المت. In the hadith, Abu Hurairah had added something to it. It occurs for many reasons. Scholars have spoken about why, and uh, the causes that bring it or make it happen is the person who's narrating the hadith doesn't tend to tell the people that now the prophet's speech is over and my speech is going to start so they actually assume huh they assume that this person is still saying what the prophet said when he really is trying to put a commentary on it or he's trying to explain a word does that make sense are you all with me but because a lot of people are narrating the hadith from him pay attention it's always by other narrations from another people who've narrated it from him tend to understand that he meant he stopped there does that make sense? Some people may not know that he stopped. And some students are, pro are aware that his speech has stopped. And they stop at that point. And so ulama, what they will do is later, is they would look at all the narrations and they would find out this part is mudraj. It's extra. This was not the wording of the Prophet mm -hmm. By other means or other narrations. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They will find out. So this is mudraj, which is for something to enter into the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is not from it that's important and the scholars that have pointed that out are many ibn al qayyim and ibn taymiyah are from them ibn al qayyim pointed that out that this hadith is mudraj imam malik rahimahullah pointed it out imam ahmed ibn hanbal also pointed it out and shaykh al albani rahimahullah and hafiz ibn hajar also might mention that that this part of Ibn Hajar, uh, the Kalam here of uh, Abu Hurairah. Some scholars said, some scholars said it is Mudraj. We agree it's Mudraj, but they said it is not Abu Hurairah who done the Idraj. Uh, yeah, they said that Abu Hurairah is not the one who done it. So who is it? They said they said it is Ibn Shihab al Zuhri. So it's not Abu Hurairah's speech. It's Ibn Shihab al Zuhri who did it. But the strongest we said is Abu Hurairah radiAllahu taala anhu. So what does the hadith mean now? Abu Huraira said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi said, In the Ummati, my nation, Yud'auna, they will be called, Yawm Al-Qiyamati, the Day of Judgment. So my nation, my people, the Ummah that is being referred to here is who? Ummatu? You learned that before. Ummatu Al-Ijabah. The Ummah that accepted him, alayhi salatu salam, who accepted his call. In the Ummati, my Ummah, which is Ummatu Al-Ijabah, so what does Ummatul Ijabah mean? It means the Ummah who believed in him and he followed him. Yud'auna, they will be called the day of questioning and recognition, the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah. The day of Qiyamah. Why is it called the day of Qiyamah, the day of standing? That's what Qiyamah means. Qiyamah is Qiyamah, Yaqubu, Qiyamah. Qiyamah is called because it's the day where people are going to be brought out of their graves and they will stand in front of Allah Lil Hisabi wal Jaza. They're gonna be they're going to be going through a court of law where they stand. Sitting is not involved. When they are called Yom al Qiyamati Ghurran, they are going to be called when they are Ghur. Ghurran is the plural of Jam'u Agar. Agar is the singular. And it's a lum'a. It's a part, it's a white part fi jabhatil faras. The host on its front, the jabha is here, right? This is ghur. On the forehead of the horse, 
there's going to be that white part of it. The Day of Judgment, what is it going to be for them? There's going to be nur that's coming out of their face, the Day of Judgment, nur. What does the word muhajjalina mean what? It is the whiteness that is on the hooves of the horse. Muhajjalina is what is on the hooves, the, the horse's hooves. Min athari wudu. So the people they're shining from the what? Their hands and their legs and their forehead. Shining the day of judgment. Why? What's the reason they are? Because of their wudu in which they did. Because of the wudu in which they did. Min athari wudu. Abu Huraira then said, Fabanistata, anyone who is able, ayutila, anyone who's able to lengthen wurratahu. His foreheads, wood, the forehead on the wood, then let him do so. Falif, let him do that. Let him do that. Let him do that. Anyone who is able to, and you tila for him to lengthen, who his gurra. The gurra means what? The whiteness that's on the forehead, the head, the forehead, as I said. On your jabha here. Okay. This hadith, brothers. Um, the overall meaning that he has given us is that the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah specified this nation. Matters in this world and in the hereafter. That no one else shared with them from the previous nations. And it's a blessing and a mercy from Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And that is that they are going to come the day of judgment and their faces and their hands are going to shine. And their legs, nor and whiteness due to their fudu in which they used to do in this world. And they did it in worship and servitude to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and honoring the prayer of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And that the people's hilya, the people's beauty will reach the day of judgment wherever they're what? They will not reach. The second hadith, it says, Ra'aytu, I saw, who said I saw? Nu'aym al-Mujmir is saying, I saw Abu Hurairah, I saw Abu Hurairah, yatawadda, I saw Abu Hurairah do wudu. Fagasala wajah, he washed his face. Wayadayhi washed his hands. Hatta until, kada yablugul man kibayni. He washed until he was close to reaching what? His shoulders. Abu Hurairah was so up until he, were, he reached his shoulders. Pay attention. So and then he washed his legs. until his water went far in a saqiri to his shin. Saq is your shin. He reached that far. So after that he said when he did this. I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi I heard the messenger say, In the Ummati, my nation, you da'una they will be called Yawm al Qiyamati, the day of judgment. My nation will be called the day of judgment. Their faces and their legs shining with light due to the wudu that they used to do. Anyone of you who is able for him to lengthen his face go far on it. And his legs and hands let him do so. In another wording of Muslim and uh, uh, Abu Huraira said, Sami'tu Khalili. I heard my Khalil say. I heard my Khalil say. Now question, how can Abu Huraira call the Prophet his Khalil when the Prophet said, if I was to ever have a Khalil on this earth, I would have Abu Bakr as my Khalil, but Allah took me as my, uh, uh, but Allah took me as a Khalil. Okay. Hadar. Very good. We say that Abu Huraira was referring to himself as seeing the Prophet as Khalil. He, Abu Huraira saw the Prophet as his Khalil, not, not, the, not the Prophet Sallallahu did. So the Prophet Sallallahu uh, he said, I heard my Khalil alayhi salatu wasalam say, Tablughul Hilyata. The Hilya is what? It is the shine, it's, the, it's where the people, the beautiful, beautiful, beautified of yourself is adorning. The adornment of the people of the hereafter will be, will reach wherever their wudu would reach. Their adornment, the day of judgment would reach 
however far their wudu reaches. Fiqh al-Hadith. The fiqh of the Hadith. One, Ithbat al-Ba'ath, affirming resurrection. Well, Mi'ad and returning back to Allah. And that there's going to be reckoning and questioning the Day of Judgment and reward. Two, Fadila to Hadi al Ummah, the virtue of this nation, Wamazilataha in Allah Azzawajalla, and the status they have in Allah Tabarakwata with Allah the Day of Judgment. Number three, Istihbabu that is highly recommended, Al Muhafada to Allah Wudu, to safeguard your ablution. Wasunanahu and its Sunnah, the legislation Sunnahs as well. So it's highly recommended to safeguard your wudu and its sunan, the, the sunan of the wudu as well. For bayanu, clarifying, ma Allahu ta'ala, that which Allah has prepared, min al-fadli, in terms of virtue, wal karamah, and honoring, li ahli al for the people of evolution, the day of judgment. Five, bayanu, clarifying, ma atla'a Allahu, that which Allah had allowed the Prophet to observe, min al from the unseen things, المستقبلة, المستقبلة, that will take it that, that will take place in the future التي لم يطلع, that which Allah has never shown عليها نبي الغيرة, a prophet other than him من الأمور الآخرة, from the matters of the hereafter وصفات ما فيها and the characteristics that are in it six استحباب إسباغ الوضوء that it's re- highly recommended to make sure that the wudu reaches every part of your body here the last point which is the اختلاف of the ulama regarding this hadith or matters pertaining to this hadith. It, the scholars have disagreed or had a uh, argument regarding itala til ghurrati wa tahjil, lengthening the wudu on your forehead and your face and your arms and your legs. The majority of the scholars have taken that istihbab, that it's recommended, highly recommended. The majority of the ulama have taken the view that it's highly recommended. Pay attention. ذلك عمل بظاهر الحديث. Highly recommended to do that. To do what? It's highly recommended. <coughs> it's highly recommended to do what? It's highly recommended <coughs> to lengthen and to increase in the places in which you will do wudu from. Following what? بظاهر الحديث. Follow the apparentness of this hadith. Follow the apparent hadith. That we just came across. What? But even though the Jumhur have agreed that it's it's highly recommended, but then they also disagreed amongst themselves in what? How far are you allowed to go? How far? They allowed that going far is good, but they said how far are you allowed to go, and how how is it meant to be? Imam Malik. And also a, a narration from Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, they took the stance which is not it's not recommended. That's the second view. The second view that Imam Malik and a narration from Imam Ahmed, um, they took the view that it's not recommended. And also Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al Qayyim as well. They both all took. So four Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed, a riwayah of him, narration of his, and Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al Qayyim, they four took. The view that it's not recommended to go far in your wudu. And the reason why they took that stance, which is what? First of all, they said, it's you going over the obligatory thing that was required from you. Without any evidence. Without any evidence. The second thing is that, the the part where it says, فَمَنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ أَنْ يُطِيلَ غُرَّتَهُ فَلْيَفْعَلْ Anyone who is able to lengthen on his ghurrah, anyone who is able to go, lengthen on his forehead, let him do so. This is mudraj. It is the kalam of Abu Hurairah. And that, the Prophet didn't say this. Three, the ghurrah cannot occur on the hands. It doesn't take place on the hand. But rather it's on the face. And to... Lengthen on your face, <laughs> it can't happen. فَمَنْ إِسْتَطَاعَ بِكُمْ أَنْ يُغِيلَ أَنْ يُطِيلَ غُرَّتَهُ Lengthen on your forehead. How are you going to lengthen water on your forehead? This is your forehead, all of it. 
Okay, the hadza can be understood. Like, you know, the forehead, how are you going to lay it on it? So it's ghayr mumkira. It can't happen. Since it's on the face, and it, uh, it's not the hands, how are you going to lengthen on it? If you do, let's say, I can, I'll put it to my hair, then that's the head. You've, not left, you've left the word ghurra. You're not doing the ghurra anymore. As I said, the ghurra is the forehead. So that, it, that language-wise, it doesn't also work in that way. Four, the people who have transmitted to us the wudu of the message, in their large amount, yeah, none of them have ever brought to us that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went too high over his what? After he done Ali Sattu Salam his elbows, just over his elbows, no one of them has ever brought us that the Prophet went up to his shoulders. Never. And no one has ever brought to us that the Prophet he went over his ankles. Huh? And that he reached his saq, his shin. No narrations have brought it. And that the Prophet all oh, the wudu, you bring it together, that's where they all mention. This shows us what? Adamu mashru'iyat al itala. That it's highly, that it's not legislated to do so. If it was, or it was permitted, then, or if it was mustahab in doing so, then even one time it would have been transmitted to us. Fifth one, Abu Huraira never done it in public. He used to hide with it. Even he himself, he never done it in public. He used to do this right now in private. And that Nu'aym ibn Mujbir caught him doing it. That he used to hide it and not do it in public. Because of that which he understood from the hadith. That which he understood from the hadith. But the scholars, they said, even the understanding is not right. Because the word ghurrah, you can't lengthen uh, it.